You know, I'm usually not that guy that goes around saying I told you so, but considering how many people got upset the last time that I criticized DuckDuckGo and its founder and CEO, Gabriel Weinberg, who continues to double down and defend the terrible decisions that are being made at DuckDuckGo and the terrible changes that are being made to the search platform, I'm gonna go ahead and say it this time, I told you so. Now, in case you don't know what I'm talking about and you didn't watch that video, DuckDuckGo has recently started censoring certain kinds of search results on the search engine. Now, it started off by censoring Russian propaganda, which maybe sounds good in theory, right? We've got Russia, which is trying to invade another sovereign nation, and there's all of these Russian government-funded news organizations that are pumping out this pro-Russian propaganda that might infect the minds of the youth and activate them as some sort of KGB spy program to support Russia. Okay. Maybe under those circumstances, it's a good idea to censor this. But the problem with censorship, with censoring what kind of information people can access, and this isn't just a problem with big tech, but it's a problem with big government, really big everything, is that there's no end to it. Once you start going down that slope, it does not stop. It always starts with something that sounds good, like, okay, we're going to censor Russian misinformation. It's just like after the terrorist attacks that happened in America, it's like, hey, we got to start reading everybody's emails and listening to everybody's phone calls so that we can catch the terrorists. It always starts with something that sounds good. This is what the excuse is today, or this was what the excuse was yesterday. The excuse today for censoring search results is re removing access, I guess, or making it so that less people know about torrenting sites and a command line program that lets you download videos off of the internet. Why is it so important to censor this? I don't know, maybe because somebody with some copyright is pressuring them to do it, maybe because some Hollywood producer somewhere might have to buy a slightly smaller yacht because somebody didn't buy a DVD and instead they torrented a movie. This is the new reason. And the, the really bad thing about this is I would imagine that for a lot of people that are finding out about torrents, they're probably not using Google to search for them because, well, for one, Google for a long time has been censoring uh, search results that have to do with torrenting sites, but also just because of the fact that Google logs everything you do and DuckDuckGo says it's for privacy. So this is yet another use case, yet another thing I'm sure a lot of people were using the search engine for that you're no longer gonna really be able to use it for. So what's the solution? What search engine are we all going to switch to now? Should we all start using Brave Search? Okay, before we address the elephant in the room, or I guess the lion that's in the room in this case, we have to establish what the problem is with modern search engines. This is more for the people that are like, oh, DuckDuckGo, Brave, I don't even know what these are. I'm just using Google. The reason that you shouldn't use Google, Bing, Yahoo Search, if there's even people out there that are still using that, is these are all owned by corporations whose goal, only goal, is to just make more and more money year after year and quarter after quarter. And actually, it's even worse in the case of Microsoft and Google because or Bing and Google, because Bing is owned by Microsoft and Google is owned, well, by Alphabet. And these are both trillion dollar companies. Both of these are worth more than no single person, 10 generations of people wouldn't even be able to spend this much money. So at that point for them, it's not even so much about the money. It's more about manipulating people. And it's more about just gaining power over the world because they've already got all the money there is. And we live in a world where People's data, people's search queries, what they're interested in, what they're looking up about researching is extremely valuable. Anybody who's trying to sell a product, they can just go to one of these search engines, they can go to a social media site and they can say, okay, what are people in Cambridge, Massachusetts interested in? And it's even more categorized than that because they could go so far as to say, okay, what are Chinese female construction workers in Cambridge interested in? I want to understand this demographic. And it goes beyond companies wanting to sell products. It also goes into political parties wanting to sell 
politicians wanting to understand these different demographics so they can figure out how to shill to them and get their vote. And you might be thinking, oh, wait a minute, how would Google possibly know that I am a Chinese uh, female construction worker living in Cambridge? Well, because you're sending all of your search queries to them. I honestly believe that you can understand more about a person from just looking at their search history for a couple of minutes versus talking to them for a couple of hours. You'll probably start to understand more about who they really are as a person. You'll know all about their hobbies. You'll know what they're interested in. You'll know what makes them curious. All of these things that essentially make you who you are are being sold to the highest bidder by Google, Bing, Yahoo Search, and every other giant corporate search engine. And then again, like I said, with the really big ones like Google and Bing, now they're also in the business of not just trying to know what you're thinking, but shape what you're thinking, shape your mind. That way when you search for something, uh, we're going to elevate particular results so that more people will be driven towards a particular opinion. Now, search.brave.com, this is probably what a lot of people are going to be switching to as a privacy respecting search engine since it's from the same people that made the Brave browser. So should you actually switch to this? I mean, it's same idea as DuckDuckGo really when it first started is they're gonna be different. They're not going to collect all your data and then aggregate it and then sell it off to people. Um, should you use this? Well, it's really up to you. Um, I would say go ahead and try it out. As you can see here, it's in beta, okay? So Brave Search has not existed anywhere near as long as DuckDuckGo. Um, even the Brave browser itself hasn't existed as long as DuckDuckGo. I think the search engine was actually released um, something like a year ago. Like I believe that it, it belonged to some other company and then Brave acquired it. And so now they're uh, changing things around. Um, but the real truth about search engines is that there is no single one that is best for every single kind of scenario. The real truth is different search engines are better for different things. Um, Yandex, for example, this is probably the best search engine there is for uh, reverse image search. That's actually one thing that is really awesome with Yandex, but also for searching for torrents. Um, probably because it's based in Russia, I'm pretty sure, and piracy, like torrents, are basically de facto legal in Russia now, but that's just how it's always been. This has been the best search engine, at least as far as I know, for finding torrents long before DuckDuckGo started censoring anything, and even right now it's better than the Brave browser for that, or the Brave search engine. And you know, even Google, despite how spooky it is, is actually a pretty good search engine just for, I guess, general search queries, like maybe finding something that's near you or something like that. Um, so the best thing that you can actually do to get not just privacy when using search engines, but also to actually get good results, because that's one of the really important things for anybody adopting a piece of technology is that it has to actually work. Best thing you can do is to use a search aggregator like Surex. So with Surex, you can set this up so that you get different results from different search engines depending on what kind of query you're gonna make. Now it is something that, uh, well, you don't have to set it up yourself. Uh, as you can see here on surex.space, there's a bunch of different instances that you could use. So these are like public instances that other people have set up. Uh, but really what I would recommend doing, and this is what you're gonna have to do anyway, if you're getting into internet privacy, online privacy, chances are if you're watching my video, that's a, videos, that's a subject you're interested in, uh, is you're gonna have to really learn how to set things up yourself. Because like I said a couple of videos ago, the best way to have online freedom and online privacy is starting to set up your own infrastructure instead of uh, using someone else's thing, even if you're paying for it. So maybe this is something that I'll make a video of in the future, how to set up your own Surex instance. So go ahead and try these out. You could try out any of these public uh, instances. And I'm sure that there's also other guides out there that already exist on the internet for you to set it up yourself so that you can get actual verifiable privacy. Uh, you don't necessarily have to wait for me to make a video on it. Uh, you can try out the Brave search engine. And you know what? If you haven't ever used DuckDuckGo, go ahead and try it out as well because it's still better than using Google. But 
you're just not going to be able to use it to find, I guess, Russian propaganda or torrenting sites or command line tools that let you download YouTube videos. Let's see what's next. What's going to be next? What else is gonna be censored from DuckDuckGo? But that's it for this video. Like and comment to hack the algorithm. Follow me on Odyssey and have a great day.